to speak the truth frankly and boldly. Nor need we shrink from honestly facing conditions in our country today. This great nation will endure as it has endured, will revive and will prosper. So first of all, let me assert my firm belief that the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Nameless, unreasoning, unjustified terror. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm Della Rucker. I'm the principal of the Wise Economy Workshop and author of The Local Economy Revolution Has Arrived, What's Changed and How You Can Help. This is part of my series, Accelerate Us, Dispatches from the Front Lines of the Local Economy Revolution. And I am so excited today to be able to have a conversation with Dean, I'm peeking at my notes to make sure I don't screw up his name too badly, but Dean Alanis Todis. Dean is the current chief of staff for Commissioner Kim Dubouchelle at the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District of the city of Chicago. Now that doesn't sound like, you know, the kind of person that you are ex you you typically hear from from me on on these interviews. But Dean has a fascinating background. He has actually been working on issues connected to not only economic development, but small business revitalization in both his current role and his previous role with the city of Chicago. So I'm gonna let Dean tell the story because as I've indicated, I have to like stare at notes to be able to get um, names right. But Dean, it is a huge pleasure to have you here today. I'm so glad you take the time. And you know, this is this is a guy with a new baby to boot. So um, you know, the fact that your eyes are open is still like like blows my mind at this Over point in life. I just can't see the tape. They're actually taped back. Uh, ah, uh, yes, that it. sounds like a great idea. Well, so, Bella, I appreciate, you, yeah. uh, appreciate. Thank you uh, uh, for 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 being a part uh, of this. Uh, honestly, it's it's no better time not only to talk about kind of uh, economic development in, in really small business or time where I read an article here uh, in the week where small businesses uh, close or I think some storefronts were stopped and vacated. And, and you know now more than ever we really need to be thinking about small businesses uh, in communities across our country. Uh, but I'll start with by saying you know uh, what my current role is is uh, I serve as a chief of staff to Commissioner Kim Dubuclay at Metropolitan Water Reclamation District, which is the regional stormwater and wastewater uh, authority for Cook County, uh, which is uh, inside of uh, Chicago is a part of Cook County. Uh, but Cook County is the largest uh, county in the country in, in, in life. And, and really, our daily operational task is, is uh, wastewater. Anything you throw, anything you put on the drain uh, is really within the bandwidth of MWRD. Uh, we don't provide the water service uh, for uh, Chicago in, in, in the area. That's provided by the, the Department of Water Management by the city of Chicago. But honestly, mm -hmm. really thinking about and why I embarked on this journey after spending some time in, in city government is really thinking about where Chicago, uh, where the Midwest, where the Great Lakes are, are positioned to really make a significant impact in the future of our country, but also the future of, of the water sector uh, as, an, as, a, as a cluster for, uh, for economic development and really thinking about where will, uh, you know, the world be in, in not 2021 or 2022, but, you know, what is it going to look like 2030? What is it going to look like 2040? What is it going to look like 2050? And honestly, Chicago and in the Midwest and in Milwaukee and, and uh, cities across uh, the region uh, that are, are nearby the Great Lakes are in a position to be a phenomenal place uh, given everything that we see is happening uh, with climate change. Uh, we see uh, 
the horrific stories year over year about you know, hurricane season and, and, and what's happening on the coast and ex extreme weather from you know Houston happening from floodings to snow to everything in between. And where people are gonna be moving, uh, honestly, is gonna be the center of the country where they'll be considered, uh, I heard this phrase or this, this term used, uh, climate refugees. So they'll be moving into the middle of the country with their access to, to fresh water. Uh, the Great Lakes provides 20% uh, of the world's fresh water uh, in totality. They provide 80% of the country's access to fresh water. And if you really think about it from that perspective, uh, those are significant numbers. Uh, and that's going to be important. Obviously, we know water uh, is equal to life and, and the need for us to be able to access water, to drink water, to survive, but also to be able to think about how we can procure business around water. Uh, you know, people often for, forget, you know, uh, you need water in order to build the car. Uh, you need water to make paint. You need water to cool down data centers. Uh, so that is significant amount of opportunity uh, to consider and, and really think about. And that's what really inspired me to, to join uh, MWRD and, and put my background and economic development and really thinking about urban policies uh, and what role Chicago and the Midwest can be uh, at the forefront of thinking about water sector as a, as a vehicle to create economic development opportunities throughout uh, uh, the entire region, leave uh, no opportunity uh, out there that you know, we have to look elsewhere beyond uh, the communities that we serve uh, directly here in, in Cook County and the five million peoples that we, we serve uh, every day but really creating the next generation of, of innovation and, and, and really thinking about where communities can come together and, and really provide uh, opportunity and resources uh, for themselves, but also for the country as a whole, and really uh, being able to empower themselves in regards to, to the water sector. Absolutely. That's a, that's a fabulous overview. And it does get to, you know, Chicago's crucial location in in its access to the largest body of fresh water. And as you said, something like 20% of the world's fresh water, if I remember rightly, yes, you just said it a minute ago. Lakes. Yeah, yeah, I glitched on which geography I was talking about there for a moment. Yeah. But so, so that's an initiative that we've seen out of multiple uh, cities. So, so Cleveland has had a very strong emphasis on, on on freshwater and freshwater quality and industries related to freshwater. We've seen Milwaukee put in some very substantial research initiatives. What is Chicago and what is the um, Water Reclamation District specifically? How does that play into, into your work? And, and how can a essentially a storm and sanitary sewer district play a transformative role in the next generation of economic development? Yeah, no, that's a great question. And honestly, the, the idea is there's enough work to, to be had by uh, the Cleveland Water Alliance. There's enough work to be had by the, the, uh, the Water Council of Milwaukee and, and what we're doing here at MWRD in partnership with so many uh, higher education institutions and really providing uh, an opportunity for innovation to happen, not only from uh, uh, a real world experience where if you're a technology company working in the water sector, how can you partner and pilot some things with WRD specifically in order for you to get traction uh, to go off the market? Uh, we're working on a, on a real uh, time data monitoring uh, plan where we, we set up monitoring stations up along uh, the Chicago River at different various points where we'll be able to collect real time information on um, what people call uh, uh, is actually happening in uh, in the river and, and how interactive people can be uh, with the water uh, uh, that we are. We know that the, the Chicago River actually opened today. It was the initial uh, f official announcement of, of the Chicago River Walk opening for the 2021 season. And really, oh. you know, how can we be, uh, you know, not only the small business there, but how can we get communities engaged in the river that, the Chicago River for, for us is, is really the second lakefront uh, and, and being able mm -hmm. to bring up uh, on the backside neighborhoods that are, 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 are 
edging up along the Chicago River and really providing citizens with that experiential uh, uh, opportunity to understand not only how uh, the river participates in their life, but how does commerce participate in their life? Uh, you know, the Cal, Cal Sag is a significant in the Mississippi River, which is a tributary uh, to it, uh, is a significant amount of commerce up and down goes and thinks about, uh, you know, uh, products that are delivered up and down uh, the river and where we are based in the middle of the country, how important that is for commerce, but also how important it is to think about the next future generations uh, of job creation and, and development to happen around that uh, ecosystem, around water, and, and the, the need for us to continue to invest in, in companies, in, in education, in, in, in engineering efforts, and students, and all of the above to really develop the next uh, generation of leaders in a space where you know we're thinking about a, a, a new uh, green economy uh, and, and renewable energy, and and really mm -hmm. putting water at the forefront of that and, and water being part of the clean energy movement that is happening uh, across the country. And what I can tell you is that it takes a lot of energy uh, to clean water and where can we be able uh, to, to subset some of that into uh, renewable energy efforts. And along the way, as we're reclaiming water, uh, what are we doing with our biosolids that we're able to capture? What are we doing with biogas that we're able to capture uh, and, and it's just very fascinating on the opportunities and the impact it can have uh, on our communities, but also on small businesses and how many uh, businesses that we are able to engage with day in and day out. MWRD has a, over a billion dollar budget uh, that we procure in, uh, in Cook County itself. That's uh, with a B, not an M, a billion. So that's a lot of money. Uh, we spend about three to four hundred million dollars on capital expenditures uh, every year. Uh, investing in, in infrastructure, investing in technology, investing in, in manufacturing, investing in, in workforce development. Uh, those are all opportunities for small businesses to be able to, to access that opportunity uh, with a local government partner and innovation and in, in supporting small business has to be the front and center of that. Wow, fabulous. So for those who aren't familiar with Chicago, and actually one point of, of commonality that you and I both have sure. is that you did your master's of public administration at the same university and in the same school yes. where I did my undergraduate right. at the Edinburgh School of Education and Social Policy at Northwestern. Right. I may have gotten that name wrong, but, but it is. But the university is the right one though. That's the one that counts. Sorry? The university is the right one. So that's the one that counts. Go UNU. That's um, of course, your undergrad is from DePaul, then in, right. in, in the city. That's right. So, um, but yeah, you don't have the same. I mean, a master's is nice. We, 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 don't, we, didn't, we didn't have a football team uh, uh, to grow That's up. To. So DePaul does not have a football team. We, have, we had a basketball team when I was attending. wasn't very good, uh, but they're getting better. Uh, as my, They just hired a new coach, so we'll see how it goes. We're hopefully optimistic on the back end of, of March Madness. <laughs> Good deal. Well, when I was at Northwestern, sure. we didn't really have a football team either, but we don't talk about that. That's fair. Anyway. That's fair. <laughs> but um, so no, so but part of what's so fascinating about this is the the way you're treating the Chicago River as an asset and as an asset for business and an asset for communities. So for people who have spent time in the Chicago area, the Chicago River doesn't get a lot of love very often. It's it's historically it was treated as kind of a you know an industrial yeah I, 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 for lack of a better way to put it. For background on MWRD, MWRD was founded the reversing of the Chicago River. Um, that's a, a, you know a, many, many 130 years ago uh, they pioneered this notion of, of reversing the Chicago River where you normally everything that was flushed down the door, uh, toilet or anything that was going outwards was dumped into uh, the Chicago River. So uh, at, at, at some point, you can even consider MWRD a, a public health uh, agency because they really were able to, to really drive this notion of, you know, dumping all this stuff into the Chicago River and then actually drinking that water uh, was not necessarily a good thing. Uh, so the, so there's, the, there's, there's some commonality there as well. 
But Al, you're absolutely, absolutely right. It's not, you know, we've come a long way uh, from where we were on the Chicago River and, and really thinking about where we can continuously grow and develop that opportunity is where we all should be thinking about not only the Chicago River, but rivers and tributaries across the entire country, because that is really an opportunity for us to activate uh, local commerce and local uh, engagement of our communities and residents, frankly, uh, opportunity to get them out to explore uh, new endeavors. It is, I didn't understand that concept for a long time sure. until I heard Paul Jaden, who was the mayor of Green Bay, sure. Wisconsin, when I lived there in the 90s, say, we're treating the riverfront and, and Green Bay has, a, has the Fox River, not yep. the same one that is in Illinois, but the river runs right through the middle of the, of the city and it was largely an industrial through fair and sure. the city sort of turned its back to the river on both sides. And Paul used to always say, the river needs to be the place where we come together, not the place where we are separated. And I didn't understand that until years and years later, and I went and saw the improvements that had been made along the riverfront and just how transformative it was and how much opportunity it created for new kinds of businesses. So this is this is exciting stuff. And this is stuff that I think we could we could have a much longer conversation about just just the whole question of communities benefiting from turning back to their riverfront. But you you also when you talk about small business and commerce, you're coming from a very very um, real place in that work. And so I want to make sure that we we talk a little bit about that. So you've been with the Reclamation District for a couple of years now. Right. Um, prior to that, you were actually had the title of Director of Economic Development for the City of Chicago, right. which is that's a big title. Yeah. No, one, that... one of the things that was I'm sorry, just one of the things that was particularly interesting to me as I looked through what you had been working on was how much of your emphasis had been on on small businesses. And we think of, I mean, Chicago is one of the biggest economies in the world. And yet the city of Chicago was, was, from what I understand, really putting a heavy focus on fostering small business. So I'm wondering if you can give us some of the context of, of why that was, what the thinking was behind it, and, and, and what you and the city of Chicago were able to do as a city to help make that happen? Because that's something governments struggle with a lot. No, that, that's great. So I, I, I had the honor uh, of serving as, as Director of Economic Development for uh, the City of Chicago under the, the City Treasurer's Office, where uh, normally we, we are, are considered a, a, a chief investment office uh, for the City of Chicago. And, and my role uh, there was really thinking about how do you empower the city's uh, portfolio? At that point, it was, it was about $7 billion to really think about it in a way where, you know, what can we do with our own money, the, the, the taxpayers' money, that is, is to support the small businesses in, in our community. And thinking about it uh, uh, from the lens of, if these communities uh, uh, and small businesses are able to, to prosper and thrive, uh, and, and really thinking about Chicago's 77 neighborhoods and really thinking about beyond uh, the central business district, which, uh, you know, frankly, uh, was going to be okay uh, uh, with, with uh, the city uh, uh, doubling down on that, but leveraging our assets and investing in neighborhoods and communities and small businesses uh, on the south and west side of the city of Chicago. And when those investments that were going to be happening in small businesses, that's where uh, the, the, the communities were going to be able to rise together uh, holistically. And, and what we were able to do to do just sorry just for context sure. so for those who aren't familiar with chicago the the south side and the west side are historically the more impoverished the more um minority in whatever minority meant in any given time period sure. the more really the more disadvantaged parts of the city so you're not just talking about the fancy neighborhoods no, you're no. talking about some of the roughest neighborhoods some of the the most struggling neighborhoods in the city. Go I, ahead. I would I would say two things. There, the 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 
communities that have lacked both public and private investment uh, for a whole wide range of reasons that we don't have time uh, to, to, to go on. on. But, uh, but really also the, the most opportunity uh, to think about it and, and really thinking about those neighborhoods as an opportunity for empowering not only generational uh, wealth and, and really thinking about where we take these communities and their, their, their families and, and their businesses from A to B to C, but really thinking about why uh, you know, the opportunity is there and, and, and nobody's thinking about it in, in the right way. And, and really that was the goal of what we had been doing is, is thinking about this, uh, this first of its kind impact uh, investment fund uh, oh, wow. from the city of Chicago, where it was $100 million seed investment, uh, the Chicago Community Cattle Fund. Uh, we would make catalytic investments in neighborhoods and communities across uh, the south and west side in, in areas where capital both on the public and private side had not been uh, uh, provided for for many years but no longer was going to be overlooked because every with every opportunity that was there there was also a return that could be made so we were we restructured a, a fund to fund uh, investment vehicle where we wouldn't be making a hundred million dollar investment over three years uh, into the to the catalyst fund. We would go out there and leverage private dollars and saying, "Hey guys, look, we have skin in the game. We're putting our first a hundred million dollars on the line at, from a seven billion per dollar portfolio. It was zero zero point one percent, but really made the point that you know the city of Chicago was making investments on the south and west side. And if you're really a, a Chicago company and really are interested." in uh making chicago exceed to its full potential uh you know put your money where your mouth is uh, uh and if you want to be branded as chicago uh centric and loving chicago what better way than put the money on this in this in vehicle where we would be making investments not not grants or or or, or mm -hmm. handouts but actually seeking a return on even the hundred million dollar that we were uh proceeding forward so uh, as a fiduciary to, to taxpayers and, and to our investment portfolio, uh, it wasn't going to be dollars that we were just handing out to, to anybody and everybody. It was going to be a rigorous process. We would partner with community development financial institutions. Huh. And they would structure funds around you know, small business development in real estate, small business development fund uh, in, in commercial corridors and revitalization of small uh, startups in, in regard whether it's a, a restaurant, uh, a mom and pop boutique, uh, all sorts of, of uh, small businesses that would be able to fill in the vacant storefronts that these communities have been plagued with, but also mm -hmm. there's an opportunity to make investments back into communities where we can hire people locally for those jobs. The best person uh, for those jobs if they are part of that community. Uh, to participate uh, in those opportunities. And it was really innovative in its approach uh, because we really thought, you know, this was going to be the, 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 the lever that these communities had often been uh, overlooked is when we were able to get our money first in line, first in the, you know, the, usually the first dollars are always the hardest dollars in any, in, in any capital raise that you're going to get. As soon as the first check is written, uh, you know, the other ones start trickling down because the risk factor uh, has been eliminated by, by all the people that are on the sidelines or holding off and saying, oh, you know, we don't want to be the first to, to do anything. That's never been a, uh, an exciting opportunity, especially from an investor side. Uh, right. but, but really thinking, you know, these were opportunities that communities across uh, the city of Chicago, these small businesses that were ripe, you know, you, you, you had one business that you were, you know, let's say you were selling, you know, pies, for example, you, you, you did, pie making really well, but your access to capital was really a challenge. Your, your traditional lending institution was not giving you, uh, uh, whether it's you know expansion capital, uh, uh, workforce uh, investment capital, where you're saying, hey, uh, you know, my oven broke. If you're a pie maker and if your, your oven breaks, there's no way you can make a pie. Uh, but there's, no, uh, there's nobody out there to give you a loan to replace equipment uh, for you along the way. And if they did, they were giving you a, a credit card that would had you know 25, 30 uh, percent APR rates that ultimately would be the reason you you lost your business. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. that was so, that was the thing that was going to get us uh, to invest in communities. 
Wow. So let me let me, let me just make sure people are clear on on the the mechanics of this. So you had a hundred million dollars in city funds that were already, and, and I presume these are funds that were just sort of sort of taken. And you said it's like one percent or less than one percent. Zero one percent of uh, the seven billion. Very small. But so still the tiny, piece. tiny, very tiny, tiny piece of the city's overall budget. You then use that to induce, um, recruit other investors, private sector investors, to go in with you. Is that correct? Yeah, to, it would. It, it would. Aspire, we were out going to go raise three to four times as much capital uh, that was available. So we were. Our goal was it to be to be a five hundred million dollar fund at the end of this. We put the first hundred. We're going to go out there uh, and leverage financial institutions. Uh, lending institutions, uh, corporate partners, corporate citizens uh, in Chicago, universities, foundations, everyone uh, that was really ready to roll up their sleeve and say, hey, we're all in for the city of Chicago and its future uh, and, and say, look, you know, the only way we're going to be able to transform these communities is by leveraging our assets and your assets collectively, empowering these small business to make sure that if they were going to get a loan, uh, for their small business that it was accompanied with uh, some technical assistance. Uh, you know, do you know how to, you know, do your P&L margins? What are, what is your business plan for 30, 60, 90 day uh, uh, traction around this new capital? Uh, do you have a, a marketing strategy? Do you have a, a go to market? If you weren't in market, you know, what was mm -hmm. your leverage? to expand it to new horizons and really it wasn't going to be just a check but our entire suite of services that we were able to uh, provide to communities so that's an absolutely crucial piece absolutely. so um and i'm so glad to hear you say that because so so people who've watched more than one of these um accelerate us interviews may remember when I did one with Willie Hill, who's the executive director of the smallest CDFI potentially in the country. I mean, sure. it's 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 a the Greater Cincinnati Microenterprise Initiative. And one of the primary roles of GCMI is to provide micro lending to the the you know the very smallest of companies. And micro lending in this case is, you know, 30,000, 25,000, up, you know, 50,000 would be huge. Sure. But what, what, so Willie's been doing this a long time. And one of the things that I learned from him more than arguably from anybody else was how important coaching and advising and, and that, that support was Absolutely. for small businesses. Go ahead. And, and, and really that's, you know, that's the difference between, uh, 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 a small business that is is just starting up and, and the successful ones that whether it's been generational uh, a family business of some sort really you know handing a small business additional dollars isn't always their best bet uh, uh, in, in support you know under making the small business understand you know what the issue is for them and, and you know my guess is if you ask 10 out of 10 uh, uh, small business seven of them be like ah, oh, if I only had you know Fifty more thousand dollars, I'd be able to do X, Y, and Z. Well, you can mm -hmm. you can you can change that narrative by saying perhaps, but you know what if you get ten more customers? If you're uh, able to do that fifty thousand dollar check uh, that you're needing by expanding your business by ten more thousand, ten thousand uh, by ten more customers, uh, would that get you that? And, and making them understand that the capital wasn't the really the thing that they were missing, but what was mm -hmm. the business opportunity? You, yes. you say you need capital, but do you have a business plan? Do you have a marketing yes. plan to go get your next 100 customers to build out your next six months of, of inventory? You say you need $50,000 uh, in, in capital, but you know where are you going to use it and how you're going to spend it is equally important by than, than saying, I, I need more capital. And that yeah. was really important for us that we were going to partner the dollars with business advisor uh, technical assistant agency groups across the city so a, 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 a small business would be partnered with a, a coach a small business advisor to get them you know prepped uh, uh, not only for for, for uh, the, the duration of the loan 
but building that relationship to be able to pick up your phone and say, Hey, you know, uh, I, I need some help. I, I, I'm struggling with X, Y, and Z. I'm struggling with my marketing plan. I'm struggling with the go to go to business strategy on X, Y, and Z. Can you help me? And the successful companies and businesses all have that role that's available to them. They just pick up the yeah. phone, make those phone calls. The, the smaller businesses, the businesses that in these communities on the South and West side weren't at, equally accessible to those resources. And, and that's the, 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 the impetus for our opportunity to, to change the narrative on actually saying these are actually business opportunities that are going to be successful uh, to communities and are really going to be able to leverage the difference uh, today, tomorrow, and, and for many years in, in the communities that have been overlooked. The only thing I want to make sure I pull out, that's fabulous. The only thing I want to make sure I pull out a little bit from there sure. is for people to realize very clearly that what you just what you just described tells us that some portion of that 0.001% times the, that the half a million fund, dollar fund, or was it half a million? Uh, it would, the, uh, the total it fund. million dollar fund. 500 million. Yeah. Okay. Give, give it a few more zeros. As soon as I said that, I was like, wait, no, I don't think that those numbers are right. We're t this is bigger. But some portion of that money had to be set aside for that technical assistance, Absolutely. for the coaching, for the advising, for the training, for yep. the all of that kind of stuff. And so often people, you know, we have this mentality where we just want to take all the money and sort of shove it out there. But without those kind, that kind of support, as you just identified, that could very easily be money wasted. And that's not to disrespect small business owners. Oh, you know, it is. But it is to say that we all have things that we don't know and we need help with. I, I'm a firm believer of, of, of small business owners uh, are really good at what they are. Uh, are small business owners for if you're a baker you're really good at baking pies if you're a mechanic you're really good at fixing cars if you're at this you're really good at that uh and and they're jack of all trades uh and unfortunately the finance part in particular where you're able to do a p l uh you know you can't take a back of a piece of paper to a bank and say hey uh you know i'm ready for a loan uh great you know, I, I don't think any at that point, uh, if you haven't really projected the numbers, the, the, the resources that these small businesses need technical expertise, where uh, a partner in the community understanding and identifying the challenges, but also the opportunity for the small mm -hmm. business, and really thinking about just because you got to know uh, as an answer right now uh, from your financial institution, whatever that may be. Uh, doesn't mean it's a no forever. Uh, right. You need to get your books in order. You need to be able to to, to demonstrate the case to to whoever uh, you're seeking that opportunity, and and, and show them why uh, an investment in you, an investment in your company, uh, is a good investment, and they're ultimately going to get it back. That was the that our whole goal. All of this was we we're going to make a hundred million dollar investment. The, the, our, our partners were going to make the same investments, and then. We were going to be able to get our, our, our money back uh, mm -hmm. and then go out there and recycle the money again to go out there and leverage other businesses, support other businesses. I don't think anybody uh, was anticipating uh, for it to be, you know, we, were, we, were, we had measured a, a, a loan loss uh, uh, level. Absolutely. That's part of, of, of the good business acumen that we had to do on our end. But we were betting on businesses to pay us back. And we were believing yep. that these businesses were sound businesses, uh, that we were making uh, a loan to a CDFI. The CDFI was making a loan uh, uh, to the to the uh, to the small business. The city didn't have any equity stake, if you may, uh, on all these small businesses. That wasn't. It was a fund to fund structure. We weren't yeah. investing in small businesses. That wasn't the goal here. We were investing in a CDFI who was the boots on the ground to go out there and leverage their expertise, their opportunity, their partnerships with local communities, local small businesses uh, to go out there and put the money to work. And that's a crucial piece is that you had people who were on the ground in these communities. Absolutely. And guess what? If you're at City Hall, you don't always actually well, uh, that, know all these 77 communities. Yeah, and that was, that was you know, City Hall for uh, and government in general for many small businesses oftentimes 
is, is a foreign player. On the ground, in the opportunity, knowing that they had the relationship with small businesses in those communities where they can go uh, and, 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 and embark on that concentrated focus of how can we empower these small business to open one location, two locations, three locations, expand their current uh, portfolio from A to B to C. And really, those were the people that are going to make the difference. And that was going to be the critical uh, difference maker, if you may, uh, in, our, uh, in our experience. And if you see, this happens all the time in the private sector. These, these, this idea is not uh, a foreign one uh, for us. Uh, uh, the treasurer at the time, Kurt Summers, uh, had had spent time uh, in the private sector and it was really bringing his skill set uh, from the private sector. We had done this uh, similar effort, uh, a fund to fund management for minority owned businesses uh, to mm. go out there and leverage capital that existed, but go out there and make these investments because these there's so many opportunities that are overlooked in, in, in communities uh, uh, on the south and west side and across the country, not only in Chicago, uh, because people aren't willing to take a risk on uh, yeah. these communities because they, you know, nobody's ever looked at it. What you don't know is what you don't know. And nobody's taken the time to say, you know, this small, the, you know, I know this uh, ABC mom and pop pie store makes really good pies, but if we give them the right resources and leverage their experience on making pies, maybe we can get them not only at, at, at a storefront, but can we get them into uh, Whole Foods or, or what are Albertsons or Cubic, whatever that may be. And getting first business, and that expands the bandwidth for them uh, completely, and then they're able to hire 10, 20, 30, 50, 100 more people uh, from that community, and you really change the trajectory uh, of that neighborhood, of that community, uh, long term. So I want to make sure that we talk about another current initiative of yours that really dovetails beautifully into this. But before we do that, just quickly the so so the investment fund was established um about three four years ago is that correct uh, 2016. so 2016 um and i know you haven't been with the city government for a bit have you been seeing anything about kind of the results what the yeah, return on investment the I, lessons learned i i do remember it uh, seeing uh, i haven't keep track of it to be honest with you but i did see at the beginning of the, of, of the pandemic they were using the the fund uh as a as a a vehicle to make it uh, small business loans i haven't kept up with it and, and i should uh i'll have to do that over the weekend but uh, <laughs> Sorry. That, that, yeah you're, you're giving me more work to do i you know like i have any free time uh Della, come on. Sorry, uh, sorry sorry so uh yeah no that was it there was a it was a vehicle to to, to invest in small businesses on and, and uh, well i'll circle back uh, uh, uh to your point on, on something i've uh, i've been working on uh more more as an advisor than anything else is is we really need to think about uh, the economic recovery and how do we support these small businesses the small businesses across our country are the backbone of our local economy and if we're going to think about the economic recovery post covid uh in any fashion has to be the backs of, of, of small business and we've seen the federal government uh the support they were they're able to do with the american rescue plan and, and uh, mm -hmm. previous initiatives but the small and ppp and and, and all that's uh, has been great but we need to drive small businesses, local consumers, and this idea of shopping local. Uh, we need to be able to activate the local small businesses in our community uh, that are uh, the mom and pop shops that are usually, chances are, uh, the neighbors in our, uh, in our block, uh, in our community, the, the, the parents, the, uh, the moms and dads that go to school with our children, uh, to empower them to shop local and support their local small, whether it's it's the, the local restaurant, the local uh, boutique, the local uh, everything. And, and I've been really excited about uh, a work that a friend has been doing uh, about activating a shop local movement uh, across the country called Bacalash, and, and really thinking about how do you create a one-stop shop to bring small business together, whether they have a, a, an e-commerce platform or not, 
whether they are able to procure uh, uh, the small business consumers appetite to the shopping online uh, and, and being able to you know uh, produce direct orders for these small businesses under the umbrella of communities. We all love the neighborhoods we live in. We all love the communities we were a part of. And what the, and frankly, one of the reasons we love it is because we love that we're able to walk to get a cup of coffee. We love we're able to go uh, to a restaurant and, and order some food and, and, and hang out. We love that we're able to go to whatever that uh, thing is that drove us to be a part of and move into that neighborhood is really because of the small businesses in our access to whether it was a retail corridor or something else. Uh, but once those are gone, they're gone forever. Uh, and these small businesses that are directly getting impacted uh, from COVID is, is look, Amazon, uh, uh, and I don't want I mean to pick on Amazon, but these large uh, uh, marketplaces have done really well uh, over the last year. And, and what we've been able to see is the, 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 the small business nearest and dearest to us, closest to us, are the ones that are struggling the most. The ones right yeah. in our backyard uh, and, and, and right within walking distance, if you may, are the ones that are, are not being able to be utilized in, in, the, in the most uh, opportune way. And really thinking about if we're able to create uh, a, a simplified, a quick, fast, and easy online shopping e-commerce uh, uh, platform, activating the small businesses around our communities, supporting the local ecosystem, driving community dollars into community commerce uh, opportunities, that's really going to be the game changer uh, uh, for the future. And really thinking about how communities are be able to leverage each other, leverage the marketplace, and really shop local uh, is how we're going to be able to, to move forward on the economic recovery, whatever it looks like uh, in the future. Whatever we knew in the past is no longer going to be the same. Uh, we're all going to be able to have to pivot and, 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 and differentiate ourselves. But this online experience and making sure that whether it's a curbside pickup or I order now and I pick it up a different time, whether it's the last mile distribution where you're you know, getting stuff delivered for you directly, these are all mm -hmm. things that small businesses uh, had struggled over the last 12 months, but are beginning to figure this out and are beginning to leverage tools uh, like Bacalash, like uh, last mile distribution centers to be able to support themselves, but also their communities. And, and I'm hopefully optimistic that the future of all economies local uh, will support, you know, the mom and pop shops around uh, the country, because that's, those are the backbones. The, the, the mom and pop shops are hiring uh, from the community, keeping dollars locally in the community and not shipping dollars outwards. If you can buy something, you know, two, three, four miles away, please go ahead and do so. Uh, call uh, and tell them, hey, we're looking for this or um, I'm looking to buy that. It's, yeah. It's, it's, that's the real opportunity to keep our, lo our local dollars and our local economy growing. And as we're all thinking about, you know, if, if we do 10% uh, uh, of our shopping locally, that's a significant amount of impact uh, in our local yeah. economy, job creation, the future yes. uh, uh, of, of these communities depends on it. The future of everybody's neighborhoods depends on it. Our local economies are, are dependent on us uh, showing up and supporting it. There's several initiatives I've seen uh, across. Uh, there's one in particular here in, in Oak Park, a uh, community not far uh, uh, outside of Chicago, where I think it's Takeout Thursdays where yeah. Oak Park residents are, are inspired to spend $25 as a family to do takeout. Mm -hmm. Those are the yep. kind of initiatives communities need to uh, rally around on and support. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, because those are the, 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 the communities, uh, partnerships, you know, the, 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 the restaurant, the mom and pop shop has been there for, you know, your, your kid's baseball team. Whenever you need a, a sponsor for something, they've always been there for us. And now it's time for as consumers for us to be around uh, and be yeah. there for them. One of the things that I particularly love about the approach that Bacalash is, is made. And as you know, I've been looking at this space of online online purchasing for from local businesses. I've been looking at this for a long time. Um, there's a lot of people who have been trying to do things. One of the things that I really love about ba the Bacalash approach is that it's basically a, it makes a, a, um, a collection 
out of the businesses within a community. Correct. So number one, I can buy from multiple community, local places in, at one time, but I can also then potentially discover things in my community that, you know, it's not on the street that I yeah. walk down every day. That's a new discovery. That's and a it's that's exactly right. And, and this idea of, you know, you know, what we know in, our, in, in, in what we'll be able to understand year over in the years to come is that this online uh, uh, shopping experience is only growing uh, more and more people are getting more comfortable with uh, mm -hmm. shopping online. But being able to shop for multiple uh, uh, merchants, multiple vendors under one transaction and being able to pick uh, uh, you know, I'll pick up this at, at five o'clock. Maybe this thing will get delivered to me directly. But on one transaction it is really uh, the golden ticket, if you may, on how do you do online marketplaces. And and I think that a similar part of, uh, of what Barclash is also uh, doing is, is supporting the local community in some effort. If, if, if there's a chamber of commerce that they're working in bringing these communities together, uh, mm -hmm. the sales will go back to the chamber, a portion will, of, of the sales We'll go back to the community-based organization that is bringing that community together uh, on the marketplace. And, and that's where, we, you know, you're able to bring, I think, uh, several different uh, communities uh, or ecosystems, if you may, uh, uh, small business and merchants, uh, the, the community-based organization, the nonprofit world, if you may, uh, which mm -hmm. is also struggling uh, in itself of, of, of fundraising because, frankly, you know, the traditional venue or opportunity of, of bringing you know, 500 people together for a gala or for a night of, of celebration to raise, you know, several hundred thousand dollars or whatever uh, you were able to do. You know, I, I don't know when that is able to be happy. If that is, a, you know, something that, you know, is foretold in the next 18, 24 months, I, I don't know. And I, I don't know how many people else know that that, that might be the case. But being yeah. able to support the local small business, be able to support your local nonprofits that are near and dear to your heart, uh, as well as bringing consumers to those two opportunities that I can shop from a local small business, uh, multiple if I if I so desire, and be able to support uh, a cause that is is important to me, uh, it, it's a triple win. It is a triple win. So, so this is awesome. This is it, Dean. You have been you've been touching some things. I titled this session "The Bleeding Edge of Economic Development," and and I really think you've embodied that. So between the the impact of of the environmental um, opportunities, the clean energy opportunities, the nexus of that and the small business world and the bi local world, I think is incredibly powerful. And you know, as you know, I've been a you know card carrying economic developer for a long time. I have to tell you, these were not conversations that we had very often, even. 10 years ago. Sure. And in some places, it's still not the conversation. And yet, so clearly, this is the direction that we have to be moving. Absolutely. So, Dean, is there any any last words, anything you want to recommend to folks who are listening or watching? Uh, things that you yeah, recommend? Yeah, go out and, 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 like I said earlier, keep uh, the local opportunity. Go check out what Bacalash is building. Go check out what, uh, you know, initiatives to shop local efforts are doing locally. Uh, in your community, let's you know over the next you know the spring and summer and fall and as you know we we often think about shopping local uh, uh, during the holidays, but it, it could be an opportunity for every uh, every occasion that you're really uh, out to, to to support. And you know this this idea of, the, uh, of water, uh, you know we're taking it for granted in in a lot of places, especially uh, you know in the Midwest. I'll, I'll be pretty frank with you. Uh, if you really think about water. Uh, on the coast and in Arizona and California, it, me, it has a whole different meaning to it uh, than it does here in, in Chicago and in, in, in my backyard. But really, we have to be able to conserve such a precious uh, uh, natural resource because, frankly, once it's gone, it's gone. Uh, yeah. uh, there's, there's not, uh, uh, you know, we take for granted this notion just because Chicago, uh, uh, the Lake Michigan is in, in our backyards. Uh, you know, for, for, for Wisconsin and, and, and Michigan and Indiana and Ohio, uh, the same thing. The Great Lakes are in our backyard. But we have to really be cognizant of the fact that you know, can we give water one more life? Can we give it uh, another opportunity to, 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 to do something else after it's been used one more time? 
And really, I implore all of us to, to think about that because that's going to really be the difference, I feel like, uh, for all of us here in the Midwest, but all of us uh, across the country to, to be cognizant of the fact that we are, we are uh, gratefully blessed to be uh, having such a, a bountiful access to such a natural and important resource that we shouldn't think twice uh, about spoiling it or, or not being wise about how we approach it. And, and conserving water uh, is, is, is frankly one of my goals now. I, I think about, uh, you know, when I started this in, in this business a couple of years ago, I was the guy that, you know, left the water running when I was brushing my teeth. I'll tell you, don't do that anymore. Uh, you know, I, I, bought, I have bought a rain barrel for my house because I can capture uh, the water coming off my roof discontinuing uh, my downspout. Uh, these are all small things all of us can be doing uh, in our own home and, and, and telling our friends and family and so on, you know, don't run the dishwasher or laundry when it's pouring uh, rain outside. It only stresses uh, the infrastructure in this place. Yeah. What we know is that we're getting much more rapid, uh, intense rainfalls in a, in a shorter duration of time. And our mm -hmm. infrastructure, that's why I'm excited about uh, the infrastructure plan that uh, the Biden administration uh, presented several weeks ago, because it does make a lot of investments in our in our water infrastructure. These are the investments that are also job creators. And mm -hmm. I'll end on this. Most people don't know that uh, water infrastructure jobs are four times, uh, uh, they create four times as many jobs as any road, building, school, park uh, that is being able to be built. But nobody wants to invest in them because once you're done, uh, do it. You, you, you cover up with, with sand and dirt and you, you, you cover it up and nobody thinks about it again. Uh, we often kid uh, at MWRD that the only time people think about it is that when they can't flush their toilet and their basement gets flooded. Uh, that's the only time they ever think about it. If, if those two things are happening, uh, and that's a good thing, uh, honestly, when we've done our, our work, but we really need to be focused on how do we make these investments in our infrastructure, not only in water, but in, in, in the electrical grid and in, in, in electric vehicle uh, upgrades? That's really going to be the future uh, of our country. And I'm excited where, you know, what the next 20, 30, 40 years will look like uh, yeah. from, from now. And, and you know, uh, I think we have a lot of innovation in a whole wide different uh, sectors, but small business is going to be the core of all of them, uh, whether it's a local mom and pop shop. Uh, in in your community or the local small business that's building a widget for uh, a piece of a, a, a technology or, or manufacturing or whatever that may be. Absolutely, absolutely. So thank you so much, thank Dean. You. Thank you very I'll much. Let you, uh, I'm sure somebody's going to be screaming for your attention before long in a household with littles. I sure um, appreciate but, that. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, you take care. Have a wonderful day. All right. Thanks so much, everybody. And we'll post some references underneath these videos. Um, so make sure you look down below in the comments or you look in the in the notes that accompany this this podcast, and uh, we'll hopefully fill in the blanks. So until next time, go get them. Thanks. To speak the truth, frankly and boldly. Nor need we shrink from honestly facing conditions in our country today. This great nation will endure as it has endured, will revive and will prosper. So first of all, let me assert my firm belief that the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Nameless, unreasoning, unjustified terror, which paralyzes...